Hi there, hope you are doing great. Today I'm going to put together a new PC I'm going to use for music production, video editing, some image uh, editing and uh, gaming. I decided to make a how to build a PC guide out of this. So if you want to jump straight to that, I have timestamps in the description below where you can learn how to install the CPU in the motherboard, how you install the memory in the motherboard and yeah, everything that covers how to build a PC. Before we start this build guide, I assume you already have picked up the parts you're going to use and have them at hand. If not, I have links to most of the parts I use in this build in the description below. The links are affiliate links to Amazon and if you use those links, it gives me a little commission with no extra cost to you. So this build is based on a Ryzen 3900X. It's a 12 core 24 thread CPU. In addition to that, 32 gigabytes of G-Skill 3600 megahertz memory with the B die. For storage, I'm using the Samsung 950 Pro. This is the same SSD I've been using for the past four or five years. I'm going to use reuse this from my previous build. And uh, everything is then mounted in Asus Crosshair Hero 8 motherboard. In addition, I'm going to reuse the Fractal Design Define S case and the power supply I have for my previous build. For the sake of this video, however, I have uh, removed everything so uh, it looks like they, the parts are new. We are going to mount them into the case and you are going to see how, uh, how we are going to do that. Also, please take a moment to subscribe or like this video. If you do that, Google sees that and it will up this video in the search results. That's of course helpful for me, but also helpful for other people that search for how to build a PC. You don't need that many tools to build your own PC. A Philips head screwdriver takes you a long way. In addition, it could be nice to have some wire cutters for your cable management and also some zip ties to tighten down the cables. So the first thing I like to start with is to prep the motherboard. We begin with unboxing it and prepare all the parts we need. I usually try to mount as much parts as possible on the motherboard itself before mounting the motherboard into the case. It just makes the build process much easier. So we are going to install this CPU first. The uh, M2 SSD and the memory. And in addition, we are going to mount the AMD stock cooler. Uh, later, I'm going to use a Noctua NHD15 cooler, but I'm waiting on a mounting bracket and delivery time is two weeks. So the AMD stock cooler have to do the job for now. So now we are going to ins install the CPU. So in this case, I'm using an AMD Ryzen CPU. If you are building an Intel system, the process is very much similar but I recommend you check your motherboard's manual for instructions. Other than that, the build is more or less the same. When you take out the CPU, you hold it like this by the sides and you don't try to not touch the pins on the underside, as you can see here. Hold the CPU by its side. This is the AM4 socket where the CPU goes into and on the side here you have a, a little lever. You have to lift it up so it stands upright like so. Now we are going to install the CPU into the socket. If you look at one of the corners of the CPU you will see a triangle and if you look at the socket on the motherboard you will also see a very small triangle there. These two, two triangles have to line up. In this case I think it's here. Gently drop the CPU into the socket. This should not require any force at all. It should just drop in like so. Give it a little wiggle on the side. And if you see, if you can feel that it's in the holes, I drop the lever down to secure the CPU. It should feel a little resistance here, but it's fine. And now your CPU is installed. For memory installation, you start by opening the retention clips on the side here. You may also have retention clips on the other side. I don't have that on this motherboard, 
but if you have it on the other side you have to open them as well. Now we have to take a look at your memory and uh, make a note of the, um, the notch in the memory here. Let's see if we can focus there. This notch in the middle here should line up with rise in the memory slot, like so. Just drop it in there and you press on the sides until you hear that click. Let's try it again. And now the memory is installed. But you have to make sure of one thing. If you only use two sticks, you have to place them in the correct memory slot so you get the correct performance. And to do that, you have to open up your manual. Yep, you have to read the manual and you have to go to, to system memory. And your manual here will recommend the memory configuration based on how many memory sticks you have. If you have one stick, it says you have to put it in DIM A2. If you have two sticks, it says you have to put it in DIM B2 and DIM A2. And four sticks, that's of course all four uh, slots. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using my older M2 SSD from my previous build. This system I'm building now is supporting even faster PCI Express 4 drives, but I had to keep within budget for the time being, and I spent the money on a better uh, graphics card instead. And the Samsung 950 Pro is still a decent drive, in my opinion. So to mount this SSD, you have to unscrew this, uh, this uh, bracket. You're going to insert the SSD into the slot on the motherboard here, and then uh, screw the bracket on again. As you can see on this motherboard, this is a heatsink. Uh, it's a bracket and a combined heatsink. I didn't have that on the other motherboard, so I think the SSD will benefit from that. So what I have to do in this case, I actually have to remove this sticker here. Let's see if we can, uh, if we can remove it. Yeah, building a PC is easy, but removing stickers, that's, that's hard. I think we have to do some, uh, some camera magic. So I managed to get the sticker off and uh, I used some alcohol to uh, take off the sticker residue here. I did that because I wanted the heat transfer from this thermal pad to be as uh, good as possible. And as I said earlier, the motherboard this was sitting in before didn't have that kind of a bracket. So I actually think this SSD will perform a little better on this motherboard. But to install this, you have to install it in the M2 uh, uh, port there. And um, you can see you have different type of uh, screw holes here, and they correspond to different type of uh, lengths on the SSD. So you have to find your standoffs in your motherboard uh, accessories. You have to take the standoff out and you have to put it in the correct uh, slot. I just screw them in by hand and just make it finger tight. It's not, not like they are going anywhere. And uh, let's take out the screw. And let's put the SSD inside here. And you just push it in so it sits in the slot like so. Not too hard. And you just screw in the screw in the standoff. Uh, just screw it finger tight and it's all good. And now we have to remove the protective cover here. If not, the tr heat transfer will be extremely bad. You don't want any plastic on those pads. And now the M2 SSD is installed. Yeah, okay, I don't want to say read the manual all the time because what's the point of a PC build guy then? Well, with that said, CPU coolers come in many different sizes and configurations and some of them require that you unscrew, for example, the mounting brackets here besides the CPU sockets. 
and also other doesn't. Uh, in addition, if you go for an AIO, you have to plan the installation of the radiators and the fans inside your case. So in this case, I want you to read the manual that comes with your CPU cooler and follow it. That said, I'm going to mount the stock cooler now. Uh, in uh, this case, the stock cooler has pre-applied thermal paste on the underside. So uh, I am not going to apply thermal paste on the CPU itself. I'm going to use another thermal paste when I am able to install the Noctua NHD15 cooler. But if you are in the process now of building your PC and you have to apply thermal paste, usually you just uh, make a pea-sized uh, little blob in the middle here. And when you press the CPU cooler down, it will spread out. The lever on the side here can be a little hard to press down, but it should, uh, it should eventually go down. And then you just connect the power cable for your CPU fan. So now we are soon ready to insert the motherboard into the case. But before we do that, we have to prep the case. Uh, you have to take it out the box and uh, I also recommend removing all of the side panels of the case you have. Uh, put the side panels in the box so it's protected from scratches. In addition, you usually find a box with screws inside your case. They are usually uh, hidden inside a hard drive uh, cage or something similar on, on the back side. This box often contains screws for the case, uh, the, maybe the standoffs and also maybe some uh, some zip ties see if you find that box as well some cases come with pre-installed standoffs and if not you have to install them now you have to install them in such a way that the they line up with the holes of the uh, motherboard when you are going to put it into the case some motherboards come with a so-called IO shield that you are supposed to mount into your case. In my case, this motherboard has a built-in IO shield, so you don't have to do that. But this, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you the IO shield in, in my previous configuration here and just pop it out. And it's, uh, it's on the back side here. And this is the IO shield. To install it, you have to push it into the rectangular hole in the case. Just line it up and push it in all, all the way around. You should hear some click. can be a little hard, but it should just press a little like this. It should stay flush uh, to the case. But in this case, I'm not using it, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, so now it's time to mount the motherboard into the case. I usually want, I usually try to find the screws. I need to screw the motherboard in. In most cases, they look something like this. I'm not sure if you can see it. To install the motherboard into the case, I usually hold it in an angle like this. And I angle in the IO shield to the cutout in the case. And also at the same time, I'm trying to line up the screw or the standoffs uh, with the screw holes here. I see on this motherboard I actually have a, a cover over uh, the screw over the, th the screw hole here. But I know that the standoff in here is not really a standoff, it's just a stud that's, that's just pushing inside the hole. So uh, I don't have to remove uh, this and put a screw there, it's because it's not a standoff. So it looks like everything here is in line and it looks good uh, on the back side. So now we just have to in screw in the screws for the motherboard. And again, you don't want to over tighten the screws, just screw them in until you feel some resistance and tighten it up a little. That's usually enough. And now the last screw is in and the motherboard is installed into the case. Now we just have to remove these plastic things. Thanks. 
So now I'm going to install the power supply into the case. In this case, it's a Corsair RM750X. Uh, but before I screw it into the case, I'm going to insert the cables I am going to use. So for this build, I'm going, of course, have to use the 24 pin uh, ATX cable. And uh, since this is a modular power supply, we have to plug it in here. And then I'm going to have one GPU, which requires two 8-pin uh, cables. And that goes into, into here. In addition, I have a few hard drives I'm going to connect. And this is what powers the SATA connectors. And that goes into peripherals and SATA. Now we just take the power supply and put it into the case like so. But that's not the only cable uh, I'm going to use. We also have to use a power cable for the CPU. And that cable is already routed here and I have it zip tied on the back. It comes out up here. Uh, and that also goes into here like so. So now the screws for the power supply used usually looks like this. And you have to find the holes on the back and you screw it in. The fan on the power supply should usually take in air from the outside. So in this case the fan is pointing downwards and uh, the underside of this case is, I'm not sure if the English word is correct, but I think it's perforated with a filter underneath. So uh, it prevents uh, dust from building up in the power supply. Uh, other cases could be configured in another way. So uh, you have to see in your case where, where you can get some fresh air and it's usually the best way to orient uh, the power supply fan and uh, make it so it's able to take in uh, fresh air. And now I take the cables from the power supply and push them through the hole to the back to the back of the case. Then we turn the case around and take a look at the back. So here are the cables on the back side. Uh, I usually try to line them up as good as possible with the connectors or power connectors on the other side of the case. As you can see here, we have the CPU power cable going here and up in that hole. And the 24-pin uh, cable, I have to do some kind of magic here. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can uh, make of this. So now it's time to connect some cables. We'll begin with the uh, switches for the case here. For this motherboard we have this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, but uh, you, you connect the chassis cables to this guy. If we can get it to focus. You connect the uh, chassis cables to this guy and then you plug it into the motherboard uh, down here. Let's see, HDD LED and let's find the reset switch. And, uh, and here is the reset switch. And let's plug it in here. And let's find the um, power cable. That's the power switch, like so. And then we have power LED, plus and minus. And on these cables, they are marked, so it's easy to know where they go. So minus to minus, and plus to plus. And then you take the whole thing and you put it, in this case, it's on this little, on these pins. Uh, I have been uh, routing the cable so they are uh, on the place they should be. And now we take the USB 3 cable and try to put it in the socket here. Be, be careful because it's, it's pretty stiff and easy to break. But if you just wiggle it in there, it should be, should be fine. And this is the power cable for the uh, motherboard, 24 pin. You can see it only goes in one way and you can see it on the uh, the little, I don't know what it's called in English, pin. It should match up here on this uh, connector. So just line it up and press it in 
until, until you hear that click. Down in the corner here, I have HD audio. I'm not using the built-in audio on this motherboard I, because I have uh, an external sound card, but uh, for this video, I can show you how you we can put it in here. It only goes in one way. Uh, I also have a cable for the fan in the front and uh, it's on the back here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, I found the cable. Let's route it through the rubber hole here. I apologize for the noise in the background, but I'm recording this behind a, recording this near a road. And uh, let's, and we connect it to the chassis fan connector on, on the motherboard. In uh, the top here, we have a power cable for the, uh, the CPU. I can uh, try to zoom in here, see if we can get a better look at it. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see here, but uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's a four pin connector and you just have to try to get it in there. I said the four pin connector earlier, that's uh, actually wrong. The connector is uh, eight pin. But it's an 8-pin and a 4-pin connector on this motherboard and uh, I don't actually have the 4-pin connector there on, uh, on this power supply. So I checked in the manual and it said, and that's why it's uh, useful to have the manual with you here, it says that do not connect the 4-pin power plug only, the motherboard may overheat under heavy use. Ensure to connect the 8-pin power plug or connect both the 8-pin and 4-pin power plugs. So it looks like uh, it's able to run with only the 8-pin power plug. In, uh, in this case, according to the manual, it uh, should work. So this is what the cables looks like uh, on the back. I haven't done uh, that much cable management now, but I'm going to use some zip ties to try and get this looking uh, a, a bit neater. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Just uh, make sure they are loose while you do this and you can tighten them down later on. Okay, let's tighten it down so we can get the side panel on. Like so. Okay, this was a little embarrassing, but I actually forgot to show you the SATA cables. And uh, I also forgot to cable management manage them, but I have done, done that now and connected the storage drives, the hard drives, and uh, I'm just tidying it up a little here so the cables don't get in the way that much. And uh, connected it to the motherboard. The SATA cable looks like this. We can take it out here from the hard drive and it goes in one way. And uh, just have to have to hear this click like that and then you know it's in there uh, I've tried to tidy up the cables as good as I can here now and using some zip ties I think it's uh, all right and on the other side of the computer the SATA port on this machine is here and I have connected the cables to the hard drives uh, here. Now I'm going to install the GPU inside the computer. Before you do that you have to prep your case so it fits the particular GPU you have. You can take a look at the uh, front of the GPU and you can see how uh, you can see how many slots it's going to take up. In this case it's going to take up uh, two slots. You can see that on one, two. And you have to remove the corresponding slots in your case here. 
In addition, you should check your uh, motherboard's manual for uh, which type of slot you should insert your GPU into. In most cases, it's uh, usually one of the first or the top slots, but uh, that it's not a rule. So you have to check motherboard manual to see which of these PCI Express slots uh, that gives you the most uh, bandwidth. In uh, this case, it's uh, this slot. Also, you may have uh, a plastic uh, thing on your connector on your GPU. Remove that before you put it into the case. One other thing you have to do, uh, you have this uh, locking uh, uh, latch here. Just press it down, like so. And then line up the GPU. I usually line it up in, uh, in the case slots here. And then I, I line it up with the uh, slot on the motherboard. Just uh, take it slow and uh, don't force anything. Just try to wiggle, wiggle it a little. And it's uh, usually, it's usually easy to, to get it inside there. You can hear, you can hear a little, not a click, but you can hear that it kind of attaches uh, into the slot. This is a huge GPU, so it sags a little. So what I do when I screw it in is that I, I try to hold it up a little, like, uh, like so. And uh, so having mag a mag magnetic, magnetic screwdriver is recommended. What? I don't drop the screws like I do now. And now the GPU is installed inside of the case. Now we have to deal with the uh, power. So if you buy a high-end GPU, in most cases you have to supply it with extra power. It's uh, not able to draw enough power from the slot here. That's why you have uh, the cables like this. In this case on the 2080 Ti it uses uh, two 8-pin uh, PCI Express connectors. And they look like uh, something like this. Uh, here I, we have um, actually a six, six pin connector with kind of two pin on the side here. So you have to put them together like so, so you can get them into the uh, connector there. And uh, the same here as well, you have to try to put them together. So let's do that now, put them together and uh, put them inside here. I usually like to hold my hand a little under just to support the GPU a little. And let's take the other one and connect it there. So now the GPU is installed inside of the case and you have connected the power. Okay, so now is the moment of truth. We are doing this uh, vlog style now. Our PC is uh, built. All the cables are connected. Uh, it looks like there are some lights here. But will it start up? That's the question. I haven't uh, tried it at all, so uh, this is uh, going to be interesting. And if it doesn't start, we have to do some troubleshooting. So let's let's try to fire it up and see what happens. No signal. It's been standing like this for a minute. It looks like it's uh, it has uh, power, but it doesn't uh, show anything on the screen. Yes, we have to troubleshoot. Let's see what what the problem is. You can see on the uh, on the LED there. There is it says zero two. Let's grab the manual and let's see what zero two means. Let's see what it says. So zero two means AP in it before microcode loading. Okay, let's see if we can just turn it off and turn it on again. And let's try again.
Well, it has power. Things light up. But it has no signal. And there we go. A simple restart and it started up. I don't know why. And it starts up from my uh, Windows install here. So a simple power cycle and it started up. So eventually the computer booted up and it looks like it finds all of the memory and it finds the graphics card and the uh, hard drive of course because it boots from the old Windows install. I hope this video kind of helped you build your own PC and sh also show you that it isn't really that difficult. I think uh, a lot of people can build their own PCs uh, just if you just take the time and uh, read the instructions. The manual is there for a reason. It's, uh, it's useful to use it, especially if you haven't built a PC before. And uh, yeah, what's next now is to reinstall Windows, uh, update the drivers and maybe update the BIOS. And just test it out and see if it works uh, like it should. I hope this PC building video helped you in your own PC building. And if it did, uh, please hit subscribe or press like. If you do that, it tells Google that they should uh, up this uh, video in the search results and that's of course beneficial for my channel. Also stay tuned for more content like this, uh, music production, computers and yeah everything that's of interest to me. I'll talk to you in the next video, take care and goodbye.